William Curtis è qui a Roma per una conferenza sul, su Le Corbusier e il viaggio in Oriente di Le Corbusier. William Curtis è uno dei più grossi storici dell'architettura contemporanea e si è interessato a Le Corbusier, si è interessato a Wright, si è interessato a tutto il Novecento. Gli vogliamo chiedere proprio perché ha deciso di dedicare questa conferenza a questo tema. Yes, well, of course I'm interested in the Novecento, but I'm also, I must tell you, interested in the Renaissance. This happens to be one of my favorite cortiles in the, in the Renaissance. And my subject uh, today is Le Corbusier and the past. Uh, Le Corbusier, who was the kind of pope of modernism, still declared in 1929 when he designed the Villa Savoie, my only real master is the past. Now this is a very enigmatic observation. And what I want to show in the lecture is the extent to which in his early travels uh, in 1911, the Voyage d'Orient, uh, he absorbs certain impressions from strong buildings in the history of architecture, which become, you could say, internalized and through a metamorphosis appear in different ways in his work. Of course, it's not copying, of course, it's not reproduction, it's transformation and invention. So I'm going to speculate in a way about the process of imagination of, of Le Corbusier. Senti, tu su Viaggio in Oriente farai tre conferenze. Una l'hai fatta sì. a Istanbul, sì. una a Roma, An Ankara. ad Ankara, sì. Uno, una a Roma e una in un posto che ancora devi decidere. Perché hai fatto tre conferenze e perché hai scelto Roma? Ah, well, Roma, I think, is very obvious because Le Corbusier, one of his greatest inspirations was Rome. At the same time, Rome was a great shock to him. Uh, his reaction to Rome combines negative reaction to academic classicism, the weight of, of a, a dead past, with great excitement and stimulus in reaction to works like the Pantheon, with the light, or some of the ruins, uh, of course, on the Palatine and in the, the Forum, the Adriana uh, uh, particularly. So for me, the, the symbolism uh, to do this here is very strong. And uh, I must tell you that my interest in this has, I think, an autobiographical side. Because it so happens that when I was 18 years old, I left England hitchhiking. <laughs> I went through Germany, Austria, Yugoslavia to Istanbul uh, and was amazed by what I saw. So later in life, when I understood Corbusier had done this journey and how important it was to him, it, it was very striking to me because those buildings also uh, affected me. Uh, the third lecture, which I'm still discussing where it might be, will be m mainly about his attitude to monastic ideals and particularly two complexes which were very, very important to him. One is the monasteries of Mount Athos in uh, northern Greece near uh, Thessaloniki, where he spends time in the Voyage d'Orient. The other is in Italy, which is well known, which is the Certosa uh, in uh, outside Florence, the monastery of Ema, uh, which he sees first at the age of 20, but revisits in the Voyage d'Orient, because there he sees the cells of the monks with the double height and the private gardens, and he's completely astonished by this. And this section reproduces itself right through his life, right up until the Unité d'Habitation, but it influences also his own idea of monasteries, particularly uh, La Tourette in the 50s. Sì. Yeah, forse si può fare La Tourette. No. Mm, è no, possibile, deve essere un posto migliore. Sì. Senti, eh, passiamo un po' all'attualità, perché poi tu sì. oltretutto sei un critico militante. In <ride> questo <ride> periodo ci sono tante polemiche sull'intervento di Renzo Piano a Rochampo. Qual è il tuo punto di vista? Bene. Well, first of all, um, the uh, Ranchamp is a place I have been visiting for many, many years. Almost every year I, I go. So let me say, first of all, it was important to replace the pink house, <laughs> which was very ugly, at the entrance. This, at least, you have to do. But did you have to do more than that? That's the question I have. Uh, the initial project of Renzo Piano, which, which of course was for the, uh, the nuns, uh, was very far too close to, to the chapel. And he had a, 
a center of uh, entry, uh, initiation, with a gesture like this, which was very uh, in competition with, uh, with Ranchamp. Uh, so when the pressure was put on him, I think this was good for everybody, including Renzo Keno. I think it improved the project. The question I have is, should all those people be on that hilltop? It's a very uh, solitary place. Uh, it's not a normal place of the Catholic cult. <laughs> It's that, of course, it's a place for receiving the pèlerinage, the pèlerinastrum, no, the, the, uh, the pilgrimage uh, of the Assumption and of the birthday of, of the Virgin. But it's also, in a more general sense, a sacred space. Corbusier makes a sacred space that's, in a way, even more archaic <laughs> than, than uh, the history of, of religion. So I have a feeling that it's a little bit colonized. Così un po' ti piace un po' non ti piace. Sì, uh, no, but I would prefer that also there was more reflection on the needs of the society in the village. This is a very uh, abandoned part of France economically, the first part of France, uh, and this is one of the few things they have. So it, there could have been another idea to have an initiation much lower down and use this to reactivate the economy of the, the, of the village. Sì. Senti, un'ultima domanda. Uh, adesso sta uscendo un volume di El Croquis dedicato alle ultime opere di architettura contemporanea, sì. nel quale tu fai un intervento. Qual è la tua posizione sull'architettura contemporanea, cioè quella di oggi? Cosa ti piace, cosa ti piace meno? Qual è il tuo punto di vista? Well, I think you know a little bit. Uh, I have taken quite strong uh, positions against uh, many iconic buildings, uh, not, not because I'm against the idea of symbolic buildings, no, but I'm against the idea of rapid one-liners, one as we say in English. And especially in the period of the economic boom, there were many marketing buildings created. No, say, no, no, no. Well, for example, you know, one of the ones that I think is extremely problematic is Eisenman, Galicia, uh, the project uh, for the city of culture, mm -hmm. which is very, very destructive of the landscape. Mm -hmm. And now it's constructed, it's very arbitrary, the geometry, it has very little substance, it's like a, a, a supermarket. Uh, but I do not uh, have uh, a priori ideas as a critic. I respond to buildings. Uh, today I spent the time looking at four buildings in Rome. All of them, you know, they are emblematic projects to have my own reaction. Uh, the first one is the Mokra, you know, the, the building by, by uh, Odile Deck, uh, which has a lot of good ideas, this idea of the, uh, bringing the city in, uh, moving it up. There are things you can criticize always with Deck. She always has gadgets, things a little bit too uh, trucky, no? Uh, sì. Sì? Però questo è un bel edificio, secondo sì. me. No, sì. No, it's, a, it's a substantial, interesting work, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I went to look at uh, Richard Meyer's uh, project around the Arab Patches, which to me is very clumsy. Sì, non è un grande edificio, però funziona. Uh... Well, it could function better, because I think that it is it, too imposing on the scale of the Arab Patches. And the relation between the, the, the piazza and the mausolea and the, the river is underdeveloped. There's a problem of urban landscape platforms with Sì, bisogna aggiustare un po' di cose e credo che adesso ci stiano provando. Absolutely, but there's more that's needed. Non c'è rapporto col fiume. No, no. Uh, then I also of course uh, went to see Zaha Hadid's building which I find rather disappointing uh, really after all of the, <laughs> the, the Io speravo che ti piacesse perché a me l'interno per esempio piace molto, l'esterno mm. yeah, no, but even the interior when I'm on the most beautiful light in uh, this city and all these electric lights under the stairs it's a very uh, uh, non ti sono piaciute le luci elettriche no, no, and, and I think also uh, the building is very imposing on any work of art uh, there's a, a, for me a problem there uh, you need to be quiet è molto difficile esporre al mare yes, uh, absolutely, and also the outdoor space is incoherent, etc so this one is not so good it's a big maquette for me, mm. this building the Renzo Piano speriamo che non ti, non ti ascolti già di te yeah, no. <laughs> well, she, she, she knows about me okay. but the, the, the Renzo Piano uh, was full of surprises uh, the big idea is very good huh? the placement of this in the city, in the park uh, the idea of an amphitheater the shells uh, the, the elements used architecturally are a little bit 
too much ingredients, sì. cha cha, break, this, that, the other. But you still come away feeling it's somewhat... E anche tanti dettagli sono un po' yeah, sciatti. sciatti. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But the overall relationship of people, how you move in and out of the auditoria, creating a social space, uh, a little reference to the antique theater, is very intelligent. And the, the shells are beautiful outside. Sì. Maybe inside the sal sala... Uh, sì, di, le due forme di scatola non sono yeah, felici yeah, come yeah. quella principale. Yes, it's not a totally, totally resolved uh, project, but it's, there's a kind of rigor and understanding in, in that uh, project. Of course, it has many memories of Sydney, Opera House, things like sì, this. Not, sì. not directly, but the idea... E anche un po' Sharon dentro. Sharon, sì, dentro... sì, sì, sì. Eh. But as a building between park, city, autostrada, Funziona magnificamente, yes. è arrivatializzato il quartiere. I think so. uh, Quindi yeah. sintetizzando parliamo delle opere meno degli architetti e giudichiamo yes. le opere sì. ciascuna per... Sì, you can't just judge architects, you have to say every architect, even a very good architect, produces some mediocre work and maybe a mediocre architect sometimes produces something quite inspiring and you have to be fair about just about that and for me criticism is finally about weighing up the possibilities of an individual work but understanding it on many levels reading it understanding the context the intentions the culture of the time the construction there's no recipe for criticism you, you have to have a lot of a, a culture of your own and you have to have a good, good eye <laughs> benissimo credo che questa sia un'ottima conclusione grazie, grazie william grazie.